All right, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we need to talk about the tropics because the tropics are literally exploding right now. We've been talking so much about seasonal forecasts, we forgot to be paying attention to the tropics. Now there's two active tropical cyclones that are possibly going to develop, and then we also have two areas of interest. On top of that, that brings us to a total of four areas of interest. We're gonna talk about all of those things within this video. Now before I get into things, I would ask that you do leave a like down below, so smash the like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather related content because all three of those things help me out so much in growing this channel and providing great weather content for you guys. I appreciate all of you so much. For today's comment of the day, I want to know which one of these four systems do you think has the most potential? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now let's get straight into this video and first things first we're taking a look at our two-day graphical tropical weather outlook here from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, now keep in mind there is a five-day outlook as well so you see the zero percent chance there uh, that does not mean that there's a zero percent chance forever just within the next two days. So we will take a look at the five-day outlook soon. We have a 10 percent chance of development there with that one that is moving offshore of Africa as of the next two days. So it's unlikely that it's going to develop that soon but it could. Now here's the five day outlook and we're not showing the percentages yet, but this shows you where they're gonna pretty much going ahead. Uh, we see the one up front there is possibly going to head towards kind of like the Eastern Caribbean there. And then it's a question mark beyond that because it's gonna head north of Puerto Rico most likely. And then kind of the sky's the limit. We don't really know where it's headed after that. Now our second disturbance, that's actually a developed disturbance at this point. There is one in between them that I'm gonna show you guys. But this one is just heading into the MDR, which means it can literally go anywhere beyond this point. Now, taking a look at the percentages here, here's the front one, 20% chance over the next five days. So by far, this is the least likely one to develop out of the two that are already uh, kind of underway. Now, we do have a 50% chance here on this second one moving offshore of Africa. So this one by far has the most potential to develop out of all four potential tropical cyclones that I've kind of eyeballed here. And again, this one could really go pretty much anywhere. Now here's some satellite imagery. This one shows us uh, three of the disturbances that I'm eyeballing. The one that we have the 50% chance for, that one is located right in the middle of your screen, just above 20 degrees west. We see a lot of white and black shades in there. That is where there are some very tall clouds and this one is already developing quite fast. Now one that basically the National Hurricane Center has not really paid attention to yet because it is a lower probability. Uh, so I'm not blaming them, but I'm just pointing this out, is that one there north of uh, 30 degrees west, you can see that there is an area uh, with some reds and some darks. I have seen some models try to show this one develop, and then also that one onshore of Africa could be our next tropical wave heading into the MDR. You can see there's a lot of storminess over there, over Africa, that is heading towards the Atlantic Ocean, and this is how the hurricane season usually gets rolling, as we see these waves after waves after waves heading offshore of Africa, and that looks like that is getting underway, unfortunately. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the satellite imagery for that very, very furthest west tropical disturbance, the one closest to the United States, because you can't see it on that frame, and then we're going to take a look at some of the dust, the probabilities according to the European model, even some of those temperature anomalies as well, all coming up in just a moment. Now here we are taking a look at the satellite imagery more for the central Atlantic here. And as you can see, this one is not really looking too good yet. There is some chance for this one to develop further, uh, but there's just some general storminess in this area. It is not organized at all yet, and we're going to need to watch and see what this one does. But by far, that one just moving offshore of Africa has the highest probability at this point to develop. Now, this is the dust as of the middle of July, the last time I updated you guys on it. So as you can see, there was pretty much dust everywhere. Those golds are indicating areas of just very potent dust to where you could even see it in the air. If there was a boat out there in the Atlantic Ocean where that gold is, you would be able to see some haziness. That's how dusty it was. Uh, and there's purples and magentas and blues everywhere. Now, let's update you guys on today and look at that difference. This is why the tropics are basically exploding right now is because that dust has really died down. There is some areas in Northern Africa that still have dust, but that's always kind of there. Uh, we do have some purples around in the Atlantic from spot to spot, but it's night and day compared to how it was because w the way it was is there was pretty much mostly dust in the Atlantic Ocean and then a few areas without it. Now there's mostly not dust and a few areas with it. So definitely some low amounts of dust in the Atlantic right now, which is allowing for this 
free development of these tropical systems. Now here's the probability of tropical depression. You can see it's kind of a linear shape there. That's encompassing basically all three of our systems here. And it's varying from 10 to 20% chance, depending on the spot, to all the way up to a 60 to 70 there with that one offshore of Africa. Again, by far the best chance of development. And even this European probability model has eyeballed the possibility for tropical storm development over the next zero to three days, a 10 to 20% chance there offshore of Africa. So this one is saying, hey, look, this one could develop quickly, guys. So here we go, taking a look at some of that cyclonic vorticity just to see what the actual European model is showing. And this shows us some large scale rotation in the atmosphere, kind of like a tropical cyclone. That's why this is such a good tool. You can see as of this morning, there's a little bit offshore of Africa, a little bit going on in the middle of the Atlantic, but not much yet. By the time we're reaching about the AM hours on Saturday, which is two days from now, from the time I'm making this video, you can see there is that open area of development that is our tropical cyclone that right now is just on the coast of Africa, moved a little bit offshore. The area that I kind of pinpointed that is just to the west of that one is also developing, but it does not have that furthest west one developing, the one heading towards the Eastern Caribbean. It basically has that one doing practically nothing. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on and we're gonna move on further with this. We're gonna move towards Sunday night and then even towards next week and see what this model has to say about that cyclonic vorticity. And then we're gonna get into some of those sea surface temperature anomalies to see if things have warmed up or cooled down in the Atlantic. Now this is by the time we're taking a look at about Sunday evening at about 8 p.m. or so. You can see that there is two areas still with that open rotation there. We see the one, the bigger area with less potent reds. That is our one that right now is offshore of Africa or right on the coastline. Uh, it is developing a bit, but the one to the west of it, uh, that's the interesting one because that's the one that does not even have a probability according to the National Hurricane Center, but this European model does have it developing. And if these tropical cyclones develop that close together, I'm not really sure if they would even develop separately or if they would just kind of uh, merge and then develop because it's just so much energy going on in one place. Sometimes they just tend to uh, become one storm. And no, that doesn't really make it any stronger, really. Uh, it would just become like a normal storm. Uh, or one would maybe dominate the other and the other wouldn't be able to develop because of the strong winds in the area. It's hard to say for certain what would happen. But here's by the time we're taking a look at the very early morning hours of Thursday, August 12th. And you can see that all of those tropical cyclones kind of fizzle out eventually according to this model. That might change over time. This is obviously 174 hours out. But we do have another tropical cyclone moving offshore of Africa by this point. So we will have wave after wave. And even by the time we're reaching August 15th, that's hours 240 or 10 days from now, we have another tropical wave about to move offshore of Africa. So I think the month of August after these, well, after the past five days of August, now starting now, I think today and beyond in August is going to be very active in the tropics. And it appears that that is actually a high likelihood. Now, not only have we seen the dust decrease, we've also seen the temperatures increase because as you can see, this is our temperature anomalies and pretty much everywhere is warmer than normal with the exception of a little bit of the East Coast, but that's not really an area where we typically see development or tropical storms developing for a long time. They might cross over this region, but it would take like six hours. So you wouldn't see a lot of decrease in intensity if a tropical system was to move over these areas. So it's not gonna be too big of a factor. The biggest factor is these massive areas of warmer than normal conditions, especially the Gulf I'm eyeballing. That is where we could see some devastating tropical development uh, considering we have temperatures that are about one to two degrees above average Celsius, which is very concerning. Same story with the Caribbean, except it's more like slightly above normal, less than a degree above normal. But hey, above normal is above normal, and that means above normal probability for development and above normal conditions for development. Uh, we do have an area offshore of Africa with slightly below normal temperatures, but this has warmed significantly since the last time I updated you guys. And this has really surprised me actually, because we have seen just a huge change in this region. Let's take a look at the seven day change, speaking of change. And as you can see, it's areas near the Gulf Coast and the East Coast that have cooled the most, as well as areas offshore of Atlantic Canada and south of Greenland. Uh, but areas in this kind of Caribbean and areas there in the MDR, which is offshore of Africa, have warmed over the past seven days. Let's even look at that MDR chart here, and this says a lot. Uh, it's been below that 0, 0.0 line since early May, but now we finally crossed over, and now we're looking at an above average sea surface temperature for the Atlantic main development region. Very interesting, and if it continues to warm, that's going to be very bad for this upcoming hurricane season. 
For today's confidence tab, we're at a four out of six. A lot of these systems have not proven that they will 100% develop yet, so our confidence is around 50 or 60% at this point. For today's comment of the day, I didn't ask you anything yesterday, but I did pick a comment here. Mary's Ranch and Wild Cooking said, nice update. We'll be looking forward to more updates. Thanks. Uh, no, thank you for watching, guys. I appreciate all of you. I've been getting so many kind comments lately, guys. You guys have been eating up those seasonal forecasts, and I've been trying to provide as many as possible, but now it's time to finally switch gears a little bit and talk about the tropics for a while because it is really, really picking up. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Bembenek, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Lair LePan, and Donna Carnez, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Cat Bite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Falego, Gary, John Colisi, Dwight Phelan, and Stephen Cronenthal. If you would like to be part of this Patreon screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, Hair Farms 1 and Cat Bite as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.